Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the next episode in the Coding a 2D Game Engine series, and this is the first episode in the Coding a Physics Engine series. So if you have not been following along with the 2D Engine series, that is perfectly fine. This is going to be a standalone series, but it's also going to be adding on to that series. But if you would like to learn how we got to the point where we are, which is basically just rendering in a simple level editor, then I would definitely suggest you to sit, check out that series. But in this one, what we're going to be doing is actually building a full-blown physics engine that actually has spatial partitioning, has a believable linear impulse and angular impulse resolution and everything. And this is going to be in 2D too, but it should be fully featured for the most part. Now, this is not going to be like something to replace a good physics engine library like Box2D or like Havoc or Bullet, but this is going to be a teaching utility. So it's really good to understand how everything works underneath because then when problems arise or even when you're building new code, it just helps because then you understand how to design better code once you've redesigned other people's code. So it's just a great learning opportunity and it really does help. I'm going to cover what we're going to be going over in this series, and then I'm going to give us a briefing on some math that will definitely be helpful. Um, even if you are familiar with vector math, you need to be like super, super familiar. It needs to be really intuitive because when you're doing this physics code, if you don't understand what crossing two vectors is and how that relates visually and how that is actually affecting real life objects and stuff, then you're not going to be able to follow along very easily with the mathematics. So I'm going to give a quick briefing to try and get a little bit more of that intuition just built in. And then we're going to actually start in the next tutorial, start coding and everything. But let me tell you guys the game plan and give you a brief outline of what we will be going over. Before I begin talking about the roadmap, I'm sure that all of you would really like to see an example of what we'll be doing. This is in 3D, of course, but the concepts remain the same and we will be implementing this in 2D and hopefully I will expand the series sometime in the future to support 3D like this. Now, this is going to be following along loosely with the book Game Physics Cookbook. It's linked in the description if you want to see what that is. And I'm also combining some concepts from Ian Millington's Coding a Physics Engine. I'm not sure the exact title of that book, but it's also linked in the description if you would like to check that out. And the format that I'm going to be taking exactly is sort of seven main sections. And in each of these sections, there will be like several subsections, which will just be a bunch of different videos. And we'll slowly but surely build up an entire physics engine by going through this. So the first section that we have is 2D primitive shapes. Now, this is anything like points, lines, circles, rectangles, oriented rectangles, and then things like point containment is a point in a shape, and line intersection is a line intersecting a shape. So this is sort of the basics of physics. We need to be able to have a way to hold our shapes and hold our primitives in memory in our program, and this will sort of give us that first step. This will also sort of uh, be our first steps towards doing some simple, very simple physics by checking if the points are inside the shapes and everything and seeing if lines are intersecting. That's the first section. The second section will actually start to go into 2D collisions. So this is going to be collision detection, not collision resolution. There is a big distinction between those two. But with the collision detection, what we'll be doing is detecting if two circles are colliding, a circle and a rectangle, a circle and an oriented rectangle, or rectangle and rectangle. We'll be covering the separating axis theorem in great detail, so that always confused me, and I want to cover that so that you guys actually understand what it's doing, because it's quite clever, and it shouldn't be something that you can't figure out. And then we'll also be doing oriented rectangles versus oriented rectangles. And the distinction between an oriented rectangle and a rectangle is also very big. You may also hear of that as an AABV, an axis aligned bounding box, versus just a box. So a box is just any rotated 2D box, whereas an axis line box means it's aligned with your X and Y axes. So it's vertical and horizontal. There's no rotation. After the 2D collision detection, we'll be going into spatial partitioning. Now this is can be done a few different ways. Uh, the main way we're going to be doing it is through the use of a quad tree. 
but I am considering also going over a bounding volume hierarchy and how you could also use that using some rectangles and circles if you want to do a little bit more with your scenes. After spatial partitioning, we will be going into ray casting. Ray casting is something that is super important in your games and I definitely think should be present in all games. So right here, you can see that I have a simple raycast demo. I'm using raycast to determine whether the player is touching the ground. You can see it shooting out of this rectangle right here. And if I bring one of these boxes down, whoops, you can see that I'm also shooting out raycasts to the sides to determine whether you're on the edge or something. So these raycasts will be able to shoot in any direction and raycasts are super important because like I said, you need them to be able to detect things like collision on the ground or detect if your player can, his field of view maybe, all sorts of different things for AI. And we'll be exploring how they're actually implemented, which is really nice to know because you often hear raycasts are expensive, raycasts are expensive. And now you'll actually get to see why people say they're expensive and see how you can possibly fix some of that, make it a little bit less expensive. And specifically what we'll be doing is raycast versus circle, raycast versus rectangle, and raycast versus oriented rectangle. So this raycast will work with any sort of these things. And if I rotate this rectangle, you'll notice it can still detect even as it's rotated. So that's good to know. After raycasting, we will be going over something called force generators. Now, this is a concept in Ian Millington's physics book. And the concept of a force generator is basically just, this is something that generates a force. <laughs> and that's literally it. But it's also a nice way to separate your things that are generating force, things like gravity or springs, uh, into a separate collection so that all your forces get updated automatically. And if you want to create some other force like drag or like buoyancy, you can do that very easily and add it to your physics engine and you don't have to worry about updating objects manually and stuff. So it's a concept I pulled from his book that I really liked and I think is good to have. So we'll explore how to do that. And then after we do that, we will finally start on constraint solving. Now constraint solving is basically resolving collisions. That's sort of where this distinction falls. So when we do constraint solving, we'll set up a very simple physics system that uses a particle system and this particle system is also going to be very simple, but it will give us the basics of how to do things like Verlet integration to integrate our particles to give them velocity and direction. Uh, we will not be worrying about angular velocity or anything like that yet, or impulse resolution and that type of stuff. But we will be going over how to make sure that our particles hit boxes and stuff, and they actually, you know, sort of fake bounce off the boxes and everything like that. And that'll be our introduction to constraint solving. After that, we will finally go into the, the last chapter of this, which is manifolds and impulses. So this is where it gets sort of, it ties everything together and it's also one of the hardest sections. So what we'll be going over is how to create a manifold for rectangles, a collision manifold for circles. And then we will be going over how to apply linear velocity and linear impulse resolution and angular velocity and angular impulse resolution. So these are definitely the hardest concepts by far to get down. But once we have that finished, we will have a fully featured physics engine that allows different objects to bounce off each other and realistic sort of physics look and feel. So that's the roadmap. Now, I'm also going to go over very quickly just some mathematics that you guys should be familiar with. So let's go over the math and talk about what it all is. And then if you guys need a little bit more math primer, let me know in the comments and I will consider adding another math video specifically devoted to a lot of the math that we'll be doing. Hey guys, so recording this video has actually taken way longer than I thought it would be. Not recording necessarily, but editing and stuff. As you can see, I have my editing up here. So I'm actually gonna release the video for the math either tomorrow or Sunday. So be on the lookout for that. If you guys like this, please hit like and subscribe and we will begin the math and then begin the coding next week. Thanks guys, see ya.